it's not yet, not noon yet. I do kind of stick to that rule. <laughs> it's noon somewhere, exactly. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back on adbelive.com. Uh, this is the day two of the Photoshop compositing live stream, and I am live with Corey Becker. Hello, hello. We're back. Hey, we are live from San Francisco, as you can see. Yes. Yeah, we are outside yes, with the a Golden Gate Bridge. Outdoor shoot, yes. Outdoor <laughs> shoot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, let us know where you are from in the chat. Okay, it's always good to to see, uh, you know, uh, where where you're watching this. Uh, and and it, it, can we, yeah. when you when you type where you're from, yeah. type what time it is because I'm oh, curious. Oh, in the time, yeah. I'd be mean, I mean, curious to know what time it is where you're watching yeah. this right now. First, so. it's eleven in the morning, so it's still the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I know that we have friends watching from Europe, Africa, and it's quite late. Some Look, hi from Southern from California. Well, you're very far away, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are North North California. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, very far away. Uh, we Hello. have people from Russia. New Jersey, South Florida, Southwest Florida. I'm from Florida. I'm actually in Tampa. So hello, Florida. All yeah, you Florida I hate you. I know there. he's from Dubai. You know, so yeah. Dubai, cool. nice, yeah. excellent. So that's that's very good. So, so from the U UK, yes, checking today. in. A couple UKs in there. Yes, oh, there's another Amsterdam. Oh, Europe. Oh. oh, here we go. Oh, a lot of people from Netherlands. That's great. Very nice. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. This is awesome. Good deal. Yeah, so yesterday, uh, Curry, you, you were super nice to uh, uh, introduce us to Project Felix, uh, which is like a brand new um, uh, app by Adobe mm -hmm. in Creative Cloud, still in beta, uh, to uh, create uh, yeah, I mean, uh, realistic pictures with uh, 3D models. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, today, I think you want to continue with the 3D, but directly within Photoshop, right? Yeah, I'm going to do a lot, uh, lot of Photoshop today, but I wanted to throw in a little bit of Fuse, too, uh, which is oh. the character uh, creator that, uh, that just came out. Uh, still kind of in beta mode, but there's a lot of really cool things you can do, not only just in Fuse, but when you integrate it into Photoshop. And I kind of previewed this yesterday when I showed you the image with the shadowing, oh, lines, yeah. and everything like that. Now that I, that's what I thought we'd uh, take a look at. So, yeah. might as well just jump right in. Let's go yeah, ahead and start. let's start. Cool. Again, right. if you have any question for Curry, it's really the opportunity. We have a Photoshop master with us. So, uh, Oh, and by the way, it. everything I'm going to show you today, Ooh. I'm uh, they, these tour tutorials are actually on my site. I'm going to actually give you a code uh -oh. that will allow you to access those for free. For free? So, what you see me do today, you'll be able to access the tutorials for free uh, oh, when no. we're done. So, we'll give you that code uh, web, uh, Maybe at the end. just before we wrap up at the end. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah that's exactly. super cool. So, yeah, stay with us. We will also be uh, giving away Creative Cloud subscriptions. Uh, during this show, and um, also we invite you to uh, share what you create with Photoshop, maybe with 3D, you know, following Curry. Absolutely. No, uh, I'd love to see what yeah. you do with it. Yeah. Share it on Twitter. So. Just add the Adobe Live hashtag. Uh, it's somewhere here. Mm. Here. Adobe yeah. Live hashtag on Twitter, and uh, I will have a look you, during the stream, and I will share it with well, you. Fix that. Maybe. That still says Elise on there. Oh, yeah, it's true. It says Elise. Are you Elise? It's here. It's my alias, Google yeah. Mm. Oh, here we go. There it is. You, you wore right. swoops for a for a few minutes, minutes there. Yes. Yeah. So now we switch back you, to my. Do you feel better? Yeah, a little bit. I kind of <laughs> like Elise. It's a cute, it's a cute name. Um, okay. Let's all right. It. So yeah, let's jump right in. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I've already got Felix or Fuse launched. Felix Fuse. They're all the F's. So, I've got all the F apps <laughs> launched. All right. So when you <laughs> oh, launch, and I was Terry White. Yeah. yeah. Ah. I had this Photoshop knowledge just for five minutes, yeah. and now I'm stupid again. What Terry White looks like Michael. Can yes, you sing like he, Elise? Of he morphed into another person. Yes, <laughs> Yes, right. we can sing too. We will no, sing I cannot sing. No, no, we will. I'll leave that to Michael. No, I, mean, no, I do will, not we sing. Will, yeah. We will sing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll serenade you later. How about that? All right. <laughs> so um, right here, I've got Fuse uh, launched and ready to go. So what you do, it's actually set up in a very intuitive way, is that you start building a character from the head down. Quite literally. Okay. So um, right over here on the right side, you see we've got the head categories. You've got a variety of different kinds. You've even got some exaggerated kinds like cartoon characters and even a zombie one. I actually got a kind of cool a little one, little composite I did with a zombie. Oh. Um, if I get time later, I'll show you that. <laughs> um, but I'm just going to do a female character here. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose this female fit A. And it's going to go ahead and place that into the working area. Now, once I got it in there, I can, of course, click and drag around and move around the head and see the various features here. But let's go ahead and complete the body 
uh, before we do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just add the body fill here. And don't worry, we're going to put some clothes on her in just a moment. Yes, please. Uh, we'll add some legs. And I'm just going to use the – and you can combine it. I'm using the Fit A for each of these. But you can combine these elements and create uh, an interesting looking <laughs> physique if you want. Uh, I'll go ahead and throw the and, arms. Uh, Adobe Fuse is part of uh, Creative Cloud. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if you uh, install Creative Cloud, Mac on Windows, you check the list of apps, you will see Adobe Fuse, uh, which is how would you, how would you describe it? It's uh, a way to manipulate uh, three models, mainly characters, right? And, uh, For the Fuse? Yeah. And you have uh, animations too that you can use in Photoshop, I think. You, yeah, um, yeah. What we're gonna, yeah, that's what you're gonna see in a minute. Uh, is you okay. build the character in Fuse. You build the the body and you dress it and all that stuff, and then you bring that character via the Creative Cloud to Photoshop. And then there are features in there that are designed specifically to manipulate the Fuse characters. That's what we're gonna take a look at. So I, Al is asking uh, Project Felix, uh, has it been launched? Uh, actually, Project Felix is, is in beta, and you can access it now. Yeah, on the Windows and Mac. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a free beta, so. Uh, uh, you can download it, use it, and if you go in the help menu, you can provide feedback because we are building this uh, based on the community feedback. Mm. Okay, uh, so you, oh, you have a lot of clothes. Okay, that's Oh, fine. yeah, so now I've gone to the clothing tab here at the top here, so just going to throw some clothes on her. I didn't want to leave her undressed on camera for too long. Yeah. So you'll see that you've got a list here. Oh, yeah, and again, it goes, uh, we've got tops, so we got that, so we'll go to bottoms, and let's go ahead and add... Uh, Core is asking, can you use this character in Character Animator? I guess uh, you are asking this. So Character Animator is another product more uh, linked to After Effects. Mm. Uh, and uh, no, you, My immediate you answer, animate yeah, no. 2D. Yeah. yeah, no, it's you, a 2D it's character. It's 2D, so you can build uh, parts of your characters in Photoshop or Illustrator. Mm. Um, but here you will see that, he, of course, I mean, obviously he manipulates a 3D object. But he will do some animation, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to show you how it's, uh, how you can manipulate the character. So I'm just going right. to throw some shoes on our character here. Well, those are a little... Oh, those are fine. And again, feel free to, to follow what Curry is doing uh, and uh, share with us. Uh, you know, if you create a scene with a 3D character using Fuse, please share it with us on Twitter and just add the Adobe Live hashtag. We'll be happy, happy to uh, show your artworks uh, live on the screen, on the big screen. And also you get a chance to win a Creative Cloud subscription. You know, just sharing what you do and adding Adobe Live as a hashtag. Uh, we will uh, randomly pick uh, 10 people on Friday who shared what they were working on. So We can play with the lights, of course. Yes, we're going we're gonna to have fun with lighting. We're going to do a really dramatic lighting oh, setup yeah, here in this moment. Right. Yeah, All very right. curious. Uh, so uh, I'm on to hair. You notice I've gone down the list here. I've got, added the tops, bottoms, and the shoes. And for the hair, you got a variety of different male and female hair styles here. So I'm just going to go for this alpha long hair here. There we go. So there is our character there. Mm -hmm. So that is pretty much it as far as assembling the character here. Now you can get into very specific detail with um, <coughs> I'm actually going to zoom in here. Oh. Okay. I forgot my keyboard to Zoom it in here. Oh, and the keyboard shortcuts. I want to clue. I want to zoom it in, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> no mule. <laughs> I want to do that. Uh, yeah, so, James, so you can import uh, the haircut from uh, soccer play German soccer players from the seventies too. We we have everything. You can really uh, emulate everything. So all right. So let's get this. Hi, Alexandre. Welcome to the stream. So we are live with Curry Barker, uh, still playing with uh, 3D elements in Photoshop, but this time starting in Adobe Fuse. That's moving. My zooming in is not working for some reason. Yeah. That's okay. Don't zoom in. Uh, okay. Don't zoom in. But anyway, <laughs> um, so up here uh, above the character, you see I've got a customized tab. You see where I, guess I have assemble, customized yeah. clothing texture. So customize here, you'll notice we get very specific features here. With uh, You can adjust things like the arms. You can give her larger biceps. So there is a question for you, Corey. Uh, like uh, all the clothes, I mean, uh, all the assets you are showing, the 3D models, does it come directly with Fuse or did you have to, did you have to uh, download them? Everything that you've seen me put together so far is built inside a Fuse program. Okay. Yeah, there's no add-ons um, like so that. Yeah. If they download and install Fuse now, they can do exactly, they can do exactly what I'm doing Great. now. Yes, exactly. You can follow uh, right along if you want. 
And again, this is a tutorial I will make available to you with the code I'll give you at the end yeah. of today. All right, so... Um, yeah, because you record a lot of video tutorials uh, on your... Maybe we can... Uh, what is the name of your website again? Master FX Training is the name Master of Master FX sign. Training. And yeah, so we'll put that link up. Yeah. All right, um, so yeah, so I zoomed in on the face here now. So let me, let me show you. Uh, we'll go to the face character. But you'll see that in the face section, we've got expressions. So if you wanted to, and, you, and we're actually on a slider. So you can have degrees mm. of these expre expressions. So if I wanted her to be a little more angry, as I drag the slider over, look at the face, you'll see it gets angrier and angrier. Or you can have it being cocky. There we go. She's got a little bit of attitude there. So, but you can also hover over and manipulate um, certain features right interactive right on the character itself so let me just uh, let's go to wow you have a lot of okay. settings it's amazing it's a lot of yeah there's a lot of dials in here i mean you got eyes and head and and uh, of course we have friends in this in the chat asking about the uh, what kind of computer you need uh you know always the same with 3d you know the more you have uh uh, memory and uh, a and a better video card, the better it would be. Oh, she speaks. You can actually open the mouth. Ah, yeah. So okay. So one thing that's fun to great. do is that's when you're building a character. If you want a character to look, you can't map, you know, picture of somebody on, you know, a real person onto this character. You could, in when it's in Photoshop, but you have to manipulate the character a, a lot and actually show you how that looks when we get it in there. But um, you can um modify um, the character itself. And now what, so what I was getting at was get a reference photo um, because you've got all these settings to manipulate the, the look on the face and everything like that. And if you have a reference photo, you, you get a better idea of what you're dialing in. Because if you just go in here and just move these sliders around, you, you'll you eventually land on something you like. But if you're going after a specific expression, then it's good to have a reference photo for that. So, But uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and... Where was that? I know, let's open the map. So you can go. You can go cross-sided here. Look, there we go. Okay, that's a little too. <laughs> <laughs> Raise the upper lip. Maybe she's a little angrier. You can go wall-eyed here. There we go. So it's it's really detailed as far as what specific yeah. um, areas you can uh, modify. But you see, you can rotate it. So if you can go in here and modify things like the nose. Oh, like Pinocchio. Actually, you could if you wanted to. So let's just manipulate. There we go. There, that's perfect. Hey, oh, Esther. Yeah. Thanks for joining the stream. Uh, we're working with Curry in Adobe Fuse today, and uh, you can you have a lot of uh, 3D model characters, and uh, you can change all the settings to uh, create a picture at the end directly within Photoshop. So. That, for the most part, is my character. And um, what I want to do now is go ahead and bring it into Photoshop. Okay. So what you do is once you have all the elements in place, uh, you're going to go up here to save to CC libraries right here. Oh. And it's going to save it. You can give it a character and name. We'll just call it, we'll call it Fuse Girl. So that's good because your model is saved in the cloud too. I mean, if it's exactly. In the library. And what I did was I went ahead and, and you created can share it with uh, another designer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, um, I went ahead and created a Fuse folder in my Creative Cloud. So here I have a, care, a folder called Fuse Models, so and I'll oh, go ahead and nice. save. Uh, and William is asking, can you use your Fuse model in Project Felix? No. No, not today. No, no. You would be. You would edit the Fuse character in Photoshop. Uh, it doesn't export it to. Uh, because there are Photoshop features built in it to specifically manipulate uh, a Fuse character. So there it is. It's going ahead and saved it. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize Fuse. Mm -hmm. and we're going to jump over to Photoshop. And let's go ahead and open up my libraries. OK. So you had uh, a dedicated library, right? So right. So in uh, here, so that's right now it's on my Adobe stock folder. So now I've got a Fuse models. Uh, I must say you're very organized. I'm organized than a lot me. of stuff in there. but um now my character now obviously I've got a quite a library of characters in mm -hmm. here it may take a minute depending on your bandwidth it may take a minute for it to save over but I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and use one that I've already created that's very similar to the one we're using here so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new document and let's just make it 2000 by 
1300s. Oh, I can't there. That's fine. So what you want to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab my character here, and this is very similar to the one I just created. So I'm just going to grab it and drag it over. Okay. And there she lands inside. Let me turn off the background there so you can see. So just like any 3D object in Photoshop now, we have a fuse character that's populating in the 3D layer here. So now, let me close my libraries, don't need that. But the, the character is still in that, what I call the crucifix position yeah. <laughs> when you bring it in. So now we want her to be in a, you know, specific position. Now, you don't have full freedom to manipulate the skeleton of... Or, it's not uh, like a puppet. Yeah, yeah so you exactly. do that. But you, you have the ability... Now, I'm going to go to the open a 3D, ma, 3D panel, okay. of course, under the Windows menu, Window and Properties here. Oh, we have some Fuse users in the chat. We have Avil uh, Suri saying, oh, you can choose a pose uh, like directly within Photoshop. So I guess this is what you will show. Yes. So w in the 3D panel, there's my character, and it's labeled uh, bottom skeleton is what, it, what it's called here. Okay. So when you, when you highlight that, you're going to see a very different properties panel than what you would normally see when you select a 3D um, object here. So I'm actually going to change my view here. Let's change this to a small thumbnail. And what you see here is a variety of poses and animations. Ooh. Now you can actually... Uh, access a variety of categories here. Oh, so yeah. right here you go in, you've got general motions, combat. You know, I like combat. There's some good ones with uh, characters fighting in there. There's actually, um, oh, back over in Fuse, there's, you have the ability to create a, a full tactical with a full SWAT suit. It's actually one of the ca one of the features in there. So I actually did that once and um, you bring it in here, put it in some combat positions and such. But Is it in uh, one of your video tutorials? Uh, I haven't done a tutorial on that one because that was that was one of those things where it just kind of came together and there's some yeah. things I forgot about how I did <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. You ever look at something you did and you're like, how did I do that again? It looks good. Though. Yeah. So you can actually um, go down here and filter it down to animations and poses, mm -hmm. animations only or poses only. So let's go ahead and just look at uh, all the uh, animations and poses. And we'll go ahead and do... What? I'm not authorized to access this. Why not? Well, that's no fun. Is it locked? No. Hmm. Uh oh. What happened? Okay, wait a minute. There. Got a little red flag here on my. Oh, it's just uh It's not a red flag. It's just a. Uh, oh no! I just got a little um, notice that my, the fuse oh. character I just created is now available in my my library. So oh, nice. Let's actually add that one and see if that... Oh, yeah, maybe it was an old model. See what I mean? Yeah. With I the updates, maybe you need to... Yeah, that's certainly possible. Uh, yeah. All right, so let's uh, let's go back to top skeleton. No, it's still not doing it. Is it the new one? This yeah. is the latest one. Ah. Yeah, this is the latest one. All right, so oh, I'm sorry. Maybe you need uh, to relaunch. Yeah, if someone knows what's happening in the chat... Help. Entertain a couple of questions while we're... You know. Help! Ingredients, sugar and spice. Oh, very nice. <laughs> okay, let's see. Because you had access to it like five minutes ago. Yeah, it was there. You yeah. saw it. It was there. You all saw it. It was there. No. Take a screenshot. Actually, I, I have seen that happen before, so uh, let's okay. go ahead and reset here and do this. If not, well, I... Maybe you did something bad in the meantime. Yeah. They checked your... Uh, we are in. And say we no. are in the Adobe building, so maybe somebody just went in there and said, "Let's cut it <laughs> off. Let's turn <laughs> off his features right now." <laughs> so okay, so let's go and get libraries once again, and let's get her. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, are you going to play nice this time? Proper cheese. Okay, you select this. Oh, whoa. okay. Now we see them. Okay. Now we're seeing some things. All right. So, so uh, let me try this one more. Well, this, we're looking at animations and poses. So you'll see um, if I go and do let's do combat. So you see a variety of poses here. Now, if you hover over. Uh, these previews, some of them you'll see actually have some movement to them, okay. and that's an animation that you can apply. So, like I said, you can't necessarily go in here. Now, you see this skeletal line right here? 
you can't go in there and manipulate it manually. What yeah. you can do to get a certain pose is apply an animation, and then you can actually oh. maneuver your camera view around and then lock a position. Oh, now you can animate frame. it. You can an you can animate it in full motion and actually export it as video. But what I like to use the animations for is to basically look at a position. It's almost like you're in a virtual photo shoot. Imagine you've got a model, and you've placed it in the scene, and it can move around and walk around. But you're moving your camera view around as it's doing that. So let's. Mm. Uh, Let's just uh, add an air. So a little, here's a little fight move here. So you can see oh, our character okay. changes uh, position here. So how do you play with the uh, with the timeline? Yeah, that's what I gotta get. So window, and I'm gonna go ahead oh, and open up timeline. the timeline panel, <laughs> the regular video timeline here inside Photoshop, and um, just grab the playhead and just scroll through. And there so you can see there's our character doing our its full motion. Let us know in the chat who has ever played with the timeline in Photoshop. Because I know that a lot of Photoshop users are not even aware mm -hmm. that you can create animations. Like this. Yeah, you can actually do uh, keyframe-based animation uh, yeah. with video and graphics uh, right here in this uh, video timeline in Photoshop. So it's, so really it's cool. a good way if you want to create uh, an animated GIF or an animated GIF. It's mm -hmm. the same at the end, but you, uh, you just uh, drag and drop the video on Photoshop. It will open uh, the timeline, and then you save for the web as a GIF, and, uh, and you create an animated GIF from any video. So we got, let's do sport here. I want to see uh, it. So the Levon, you had the volume down. Oh, so how we imported these figures uh, with CC library. Okay, so uh, Curry, he started in Adobe Fuse, which is an app that you need to install. Okay, it doesn't come with, with Photoshop, but it comes with Creative Cloud. So if you open your Creative Cloud desktop app, you will see Adobe Fuse. You install it, you have a lot of characters. Oh, oh what is she doing? Oh, she's doing a little funny walking dance. There we yeah. go. And uh, uh, then uh, once you uh, <laughs> you have your character ready, <laughs> you add it to your Creative Cloud library. You open Photoshop, and this is what you can do now uh, using uh, 3D in Photoshop. Uh, all right, I'm going to go to my poses here, and let's... Uh, so Jampot Media is asking, can you add a face image to the model to look like a specific person? Like, can you edit the texture? Or your face. Uh, huh. And I'm, I'm assuming they mean, can you fa paste yeah. another face of, like a, of another person on there? Um, yes, you can in Photoshop. Uh, you'd have to set up the image for that. In fact, um, let me go ahead and since we're yeah. on since we're on that question, let me go yeah, ahead and good uh, question, uh, Jump Pot. So let me go. Oh, where is my? And also, you can use your own 3D models, I think, and rig them, because I remember a Paul Trani dancing mm -hmm. in Fuse. So like he was. I mean, he dances all the time, but he, this time he was dancing in 3D. So I, th I think it's... I still have this uh, okay, there it is. vision all right. stuck in my head. So to, 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 to address that question, um, here in the 3D panel, under the main uh, 3D model that's called Top Skeleton is what it came in as, you've got these mesh properties. You've got body mat, hair mat, um, shoe, bottom. These are all the individual accessories I applied. So the body mat refers to just the plain body, skin only. Hair is, of course, the hair, shoes, bottom is the pants, and, of course, top is the shirt. So we want to do the body mat, and if I go in here and choose to edit the diffuse texture here at the top of the properties panel and open up that document, here's what you'll see is those skin textures laid mm. out flat. So if you were going to apply a photograph, you would have to process the face and, and, it. and, f and flatten it, as you see here, um, to, ma to make sure it wrapped around the, uh, the character correctly. So in theory, yes, you can do that, but you'd have to replace it and make sure that you distorted the, the face so it would look like this, so it would uh, accurately uh, apply to that. Makes sense. So, all right. So I am going to, I'm going to change my pose here. What happened to my properties? Oh, there it is. Okay. So I'm going to put this <coughs> character in just a standing pose right here. Okay. So I'm going to grab my camera, which is a current view here in Photoshop, and if I just move around the character there, I can see her standing like she's leaning on a wall. But we've got to put the wall in there for her to be leaning on. Hmm. So let's do that. So I'm going to undo that. So actually, I'm going to do this in a new document because I want to uh, make it like a horizontal format. So like I did a moment ago. So let's uh, I'll keep it smaller than before. Let's do 1500 by. Uh, yes, Core. This is Fuse Preview. Yeah, this is still a right. preview. So yeah, if you see Fuse Preview, this is the one we are using. Fuse Preview. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just going to take this 3D layer and drag and drop it into this new document I just created. Mm -hmm. There we go. And I'm going to use my camera to push back a little bit. 
There, I can see my ground plane. And just for the sake of visibility, I'll go ahead and turn off that background layer. There we go. Okay. So let's minimize this one. So now I'm going to go ahead and get a texture that I'm going to apply as a wall. I'm just going to use a simple 2D texture that we're going to convert into a 3D postcard. So I actually have a collection of textures here. Oh, there we go. Okay. And let's just get, yeah, this one will work. So let's just grab this one. Oh, Nate says this is like Poser. Oh my god. Long time I'm in the. Poser, like wow. Poser, so. I think it's, uh, it's, it's like 1995, I think. Yeah, that for was sure, I was, I was using it on a project in 1999. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. We, uh, we were, uh, it, there was a kind of uh, competition between creative agencies in Paris. And we remember exporting a. Uh, um, not to dance, but like a move with a camera from Poser and to redraw everything in Flash. Uh, so you'd have this uh, 3D perspective effect in, in a Flash animation. Mm -hmm. It was Poser already, but like a long time ago. Wow. And before I uh, go ahead, Nate, he says, I'm old. I'm old too, Nate. We're old. <laughs> yes, we're all old. If you, if you remember Poser. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good. You're probably. <laughs> <laughs> you're probably old. You're probably old in this industry. Yeah. So. <laughs> But if you're still in this industry all these years, good for you. I'm glad you're stuck with it. <laughs> all right, so what I did here is I brought that 2D texture into the same document I've got the Fuse Girl. You notice I've got, her, got it sitting above. Okay, so it's, um, a, it's a classic uh, it's a layer. It's a normal now. 2D layer here in Photoshop. So now what I'm going to do <laughs> is go to 3D, the 3D menu here inside Photoshop, go to New Mesh from Layer, and you're going to choose Postcard. Now what Postcard does is that it puts the flat image in a 2D space. Now extrusion, of course, you know, it, it creates volume. Yeah. has some uh, depth to it. In this case, if I were to grab my the object and rotate it around using the 3D tools, so there you can see, it's in the three-dimensional space, but it's still a flat image. So it's just, hence, postcard. So it's just that. Oh. So let's reset that. So now what I need to do is I need to merge this 3D postcard layer with the fuse character layer. Now what, what you need to remember is when you're f um, merging two 3D layers, it's going to, you know like when you merge, if you've got a, a, a layer with no layer style on top, and you've got a, a layer with, with a layer style, and you merge them together, it'll pick up, you know, that, that layer style. It'll actually fuse it in there with the, uh, oh, the, new, will, uh, with the new element that's fused it. Rasterize everything, right? Well, yeah, no, it'll combine it and basically apply the layer style to, oh, the, to, to, whatever, to whatever's merged in it. Okay. Kind of the same thing here. When I merge this top 3D layer down to the layer below, it is going to assume whatever lighting and such is going on on the oh. bottom layer. So what you want to do is, since postcards have no default <laughs> lighting, there's yeah. just a image-based light, which is a solid white. But I want to keep the lighting that's going on with the fuse character so far. So make sure you position that uh, background texture above the fuse character layer. And then you're just going to use the same keyboard shortcut you would uh, use to, fuse, uh, to merge any other layers, which is simply Command-E. Now it's 3D, of course, so it's going to take a minute for it to merge, but there it goes right there. So now it looks like that texture disappeared, but it didn't. Oh, it's actually it's really back. far back in the background there. Oh, look at that. Actually, it really wasn't too far back. It's actually really small, so let's go scale it up. There we go. So I'm using the widget here. Uh, if you don't know, if you haven't used much photo, so now you can see where it's positioned now. So I actually, I moved it too far forward. There we go. So let's just push. So I'm using this widget, this little three prong widget here, which is the axis widget. And I'm using it to just slide that back along the axis where the character is, and eventually it's going to go right behind her. So there we go. Okay. So now I'm going to use the center cube on that widget to scale that texture. And this is going to create a wall behind. Now, oh, that's good because just it, to make it, sure it it's. Um, shadows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the shadow, it's got to be something for <laughs> it to land on. Nice. So I'm going to actually uh, reset my view here. Let's go to default camera. And let's just go ahead and push back a little bit. And then we check also what uh, you have shared on Twitter. So again, uh, we, we give you about uh, five minutes, but we will share also if you want to. Uh, we, we will show what you share on Twitter, just adding the Adobe Live hashtag. Could be anything you create with Photoshop. Uh, it will uh, give you a chance to win a Creative Cloud subscription, but also uh, to get some uh, live uh, critique mm. uh, by Curry. Oh, yes. So, so uh, I've, I've continued to scale this background. I'm just going to go ahead and go to the window here. When I scaled it, it obviously goes beneath the ground plane grid, <laughs> grid that you see here. So I'm just going to go to this little menu here in the pop-up and just choose Move Object to Ground Plane, and it will snap it right flush to the uh, the bottom of the ground plane there. Oh, uh, okay. So now I'm going to 
change my view just slightly here. Let's turn this angle up just a little bit more. Now, let's turn to our character. It doesn't look like she's leaning on the wall. It looks like she's leaning on an invisible wall next to a wall. So we need to just rotate her around a little bit. So I'm going to use the widget again and grab the little um, oh. red widget here. And if you hover over that, the, net, the little module inside, that's the little ring you see. This will allow you to rotate the character around just like that. And then I'm going to grab my current view of the camera and let's just rotate around and see where she's positioned. So obviously she's a little bit far from the wall. So let's grab the wall itself and just move it back closer to her a little bit. Right about there. So there she is standing on next to the wall. So now... And just to, yeah, to make sure I understand. So this is the main reason why you you would uh, convert this uh, classic like uh, texture layer to a 3D layer. Mm -hmm. uh, is it to cast the shadows? That would be the main reason. Because, you know, yeah. I, I could like use a a normal layer and just put it in the back but then yeah no yeah you could you just use position a regular layer yeah. underneath this 3d layer and yes but you would have to manually generate the shadow effect we what we're going for is mm -hmm. realistic shadows because when we when we adjust the lighting here in just a moment you, I mean you can see the shadows already being cast yeah. on the wall they, they're the, by the default light so we're getting very realistic so we're actually going to create a um, a series of lines that is going to give us this kind of shading, like blinds. That's what we're going for here. And we want those shadows to accurately wrap around the character as well as on the wall and stuff like that. So yes, you, it's, you need to put that back texture, that background texture into the 3D environment to be able to achieve that. So um, before I do that, though, before we get to the lighting, let's go back to the character here. And once you have it in Photoshop, and of course we applied the position, the pose to her, we want to make a little bit more adjustments. Like, for, for instance, I like the way she's standing, but I want to actually move her head. I don't like the way it's turned all the way, you know, the other, in that direction. So the other tab up here at the top of the Properties panel is allowing you to modify the head specifically. And there's a variety of different facial expressions here, but since we're kind of so far away, I'm not going to worry about I'm just going to actually get, let's just get this uh, intense stare. And once you do that, you'll see these features below have now been activated. So now you can go over here and, and swing the head around. Oh. And like that, and maybe... So you notice there's an X, Y, and Z axis for, for the head here. Now I'm just using the scrubby sliders just to kind of tilt her head down. So I want to have a look where she's just kind of looking down, but I didn't want to have her head like turned all the way that way like you saw a minute ago. Now if you zoom in really close... And again, I'm only doing this because we... I just want to be able to see it, is in addition to repositioning the head as you just saw, um, you can actually go in here and move the eyes. So notice I can actually oh. see her eyes just kind of moving over. So you can yep. change the direction at, to, at which she is specifically staring. Awesome. I mean, so you can change the head direction, but you can also change the eyes. <laughs> so I'm just going to have her kind of look, looking a little bit more that way. And you got things like eye strain, and you can act, uh, modify the strength of the overall expression like that. But uh, so it's just further being able to edit the character to uh, to make it look really, really cool. All right. So let's reset our. Oh no, let's just drag the camera back here. There we go. <laughs> we are, we have a lot of people in the chat discovering uh, this feature. I feel like moving the head, the eyes. Yeah, it's quite impressive. Yeah, it's really. You it's, have good control. Actually. It's 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 and you'll be you in being this 3D, you'll be surprised how fluid um, it is, both in Fuse and in Photoshop. It's very oh. fluid, and there's not a whole lot of lag, which you think it would be, because it's rather, you know, seemingly complex 3D character, but it's actually working really well. So now, and uh, you have a question by uh, Mitch Kemper, like, uh, and then can you make an animation? Also, because you're working on a steel frame, but can it become an animation? So you were mentioning that uh, yes, when we you have the timeline. So yeah, when you when you apply an animation, you obviously you can move the camera around and you can change the lighting. So you can have somebody running through a scene and, and have lights going on and everything, and, and then you would can export you have it. The, like the head to the left and say this is one keyframe. And well, no, you can't. No, you can't animate that movement. Oh, I mean, okay. whatever animation you create, you're not really creating animation. It's it, it's any of the preset animations. Oh, okay. So any of those preset animations you apply, you can change things like, 
you can change the position of the head, but if you have a character running and you turn her head this way, it's going to stay that way. It's going to stay that the way. whole time. Oh, so you, so you, you can only animate when, what the preset animation does, but you can modify those head positionings and such like that. But you can also change the camera angle. You could actually have it where the camera is almost like seemingly beneath the floor, and the character runs over you like that. Things that would be impossible in reality. So you can actually get really creative with the camera angles and the lighting, um, as I'm going to show you right here. So I've got my character in place and looking really good. So Let's take a look at what lighting is going on now and then what we're going to do to change it. So I'm going to bring up my 3D panel again and properties. And up here at the top of the 3D panel there are these four tabs and you get a little light bulb at the top here, the very last one. So click on that and that will show you what lighting is going on in the scene right now. So in the environment we've got the default IBL. I was talking about these yesterday, these image based lights. And the default IBL, uh, when you create a Photoshop uh, 3D element, is this. It's just a gray background with a series of white dots. And that's what gives you uh, a kind of a light cast on the image. And then you've got these little speculars, highlights. And that's what those are. That's just those little dots. Mm. But we're, um, we're going to change that in just a moment. So what I want to do is change first the light itself. So here we have the infinite light, which is the default light applied to a 3D object. So when you select it, you've got this little orb in the middle with a little line on it. Now if I click and drag around, I can actually change Whoa. the direction of the light. And this is basically like almost like one, it's not focus light, it's just general light that's pointed in one direction. So you see as I change it, the, uh, the shadow and the lighting changes on the subject. Now, to be honest, infinite light's one of my least favorite lights in Photoshop 3D. <clears throat> okay. There are really just, there are really four. Five if you cl uh, count illuminated objects, which if I have time I'll get into. But you have infinite light by default, the IBLs, you have point and spotlights. Okay. Now, in this case, and can you um, have uh, multiple lights? Yes, you can actually have. Uh, okay. You can add. Um, and just be careful, though. I mean, I've I've, I've had <laughs> scenarios where um, I've gone up to four or five different lights in one scene. Any more than that, you're really going to start getting uh, processor heavy oh. on that. So, so just be aware of that. So, don't think I'm going to add ten lights to a scene. You're going to be you're going to be asking a lot of your system if you if you do that. To melt. Yeah. So I, I usually find that uh, about, about three to five lights usually is more than adequate for whatever scenario you're putting together. And that's that's very manageable amount of lights there. So any more than that, you're just it's all it's either overkill or it's just it's just too much for the system. Yeah. Okay. So um so I'm gonna change that light in a minute, but let's go ahead and create the the lines that we're gonna create to um to to make the shadow element here. So I'm gonna make a new layer in this document. And I'm just going to get my rectangular marquee tool. Let's just draw a column here. Very thin line here over in the, in the far edge here. And I'm just going to give it a base color fill. Let's just do black. It's fine. Oh, let's keep it selected. Uh, so Minch Camper, yeah. Of course, if you uh, store uh, still frames, like frame by frame of, of all the poses, of course, you can create an animation from that. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. you, you, you just have to select actually the list of pictures and drag and drop them in uh, in the video composition of Photoshop, and it will create the file. It mm. will stack the layers, and yeah. So there is a way to import like all these images at once and put them on a timeline. It's uh, it's automated with Photoshop. Curious about the light setups? Yeah, we're doing that. Yeah, no, that's what we're doing now. And yeah. the color temperature. You can change the light color. Yes, you can. Yeah. Um, yeah, which we'll do in a moment. Ah, and we have people installing installing a uh, fuse. <laughs> so ah, yeah, Please very try nice. Try to do something and uh, share. Uh, what you uh, create with a fuse in Photoshop on Twitter, adding add mm -hmm. me live. And, and I didn't say this at the beginning. I, mean, I may have said it. I'll just say it again. You might think, well, what would you use this for? Obviously, you can create some pretty cool designs yeah. and scenes and like this, like that. But if you're a photographer, you can use this to uh, create Ooh. lighting concepts. You know, if you have a you have a con you have an idea for a photo shoot. You can oh, bring a character in yeah. and pose it and then play with the lighting scenario <coughs> before you go into the studio and actually just, you can conceptualize lighting setups. Or even if you're an art director and you're working with a photographer and you can put this together and say, mm. here's the lighting scenario I'm looking for. So it has a lot of uses beyond what the obvious things are. Mm. So just kind of keep it's that in mind. Point. Or if you want to convince a customer, you know, it is what yeah, I if you want to Yeah, if you want to proof concept something and mm. to sell it, yeah, absolutely. So, so we're back uh, on this layer. I've got it selected still. So now I'm going to do a step and repeat. So th with the item selected, so I'm just going to press Option Command T, which would be uh, Alt Control T on Windows, and it puts it in the free, uh, step and repeat mode. So I'm just going to drag this over uh, with a gap in between the two because we're just going to create uh, like a stripe effect. 
and I'm just going to press enter. So that applies the transform. Now I'm going to hold down shift option command and we're going to press T continuously. Ooh. And then we get a repeat of equidistant lines going right. across the image there. Now what we're going to do is turn this layer oh, into a 3D layer. So go to 3D, new mesh from layer, Would you use that postcard. Hmm? Command, Alt, Shift, and T. To do the step and repeat? Yeah. Can we do it again? Oh, yeah. I need to see it one more time. People love seeing the step and repeat. Okay. <laughs> I did, honestly, when I okay. first, I, was, I, I remember there was a time I was just like, I really wish Photoshop could do step and repeat like Illustrator. I was telling to somebody, and it's like, here, just do this. And I'm like, <sighs> so, so, yeah, that's really cool. So, I'm again, I'll just make a okay. selection. Okay. Fill it with the color. Keep it selected because if you don't keep it selected and you run the step and repeat, it, it creates a new layer for each instance, Ooh. each repeat. So keeping it selected will make sure it stays on one layer. So keep that in mind. Okay. So when your selection is active, you're going to press Option Command T. That will invoke the step and repeat. Uh, again, that's Alt uh, Control uh, T on Windows. So once you have that, now you can manipulate the position. So I'm just going to hold down the shift key and drag it over okay. so like and, create, and create a distance between the two lines. So once you have it in place, then you're going to press enter. Don't deselect. Now you're going to hold down shift option command and then press T over and over wow. to get the step and repeat going across the document there, just like that. That's Quick nice. and easy. Now, I'm going to convert this layer, like we did a moment ago, into a 3D postcard. And yeah. we're going to go ahead and merge it like we did earlier with the layer oh, below. Yeah. So I'm going to press Command E again. Scene. Now you see, Ryan didn't yeah, know go. that Photoshop had to step and repeat. Oh, there you yeah, go. Learning every day. Huh? And InDesign can do step and repeat. Okay, probably. Good to know. Mind blown, <laughs> Ryan. All right, Fantastic. so now yeah. there is our line. So let's go ahead and obviously came over kind of small like the other texture. So we'll just scale it back up. And just so you can see what's going on, I like to go ahead and select my camera, which is the, the current view, and just make sure, because it's hard to tell yeah. how things are spaced between it. So now, as you can see, as I rotate this back, and that, that, those lines are a little too close. So let's bring them back over here. So there's, as I move closer, you see the shadow it's generating on there? Hmm. So I'm going to actually rotate this on this axis. Oh, nice. And then we're going to go ahead and scale it up. So there is my lines starting to show up. So now I'm going to take that texture and let's just move it out of view. So I'm going to drag it up. Okay, you are just interested in the shadows here. That's what you... So I'm going to rotate this texture want, a little bit. to pretend that there is a, I don't know, like a... Yeah, well, we're... Bars, or a, yeah, it's a like window or... A, a window or... And you can adjust, actually, you can adjust this texture uh, yeah. even after it's applied. So I'll do that in just a moment. Let me do, I'm actually going to put it out of view here. And now the lighting, the light itself. So we're going to change it from that infinite light that it is uh, right over here in the properties panel. Just change the type to, uh, let's do a point light. Now, point light is just a little wireframe ball, as you see it appears right there. And it's just, it, it emits light in all directions. So if we grab a move tool, let me move zoom in so we can see. So you can see how it's eliminating my character and everything. Yeah. That that's actually kind of a cool nice, huh? result right there. Just right where <laughs> right where it landed and actually looks done. really cool. See you tomorrow. Okay, so yeah. All right. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys tomorrow. No. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna grab that light, and once I move it uh, over here and move it beyond that texture, boom. There is our dramatic oh my God. shadow. And you really get the preview in real time. I mean, so yeah, you really. I mean, obviously the render will, really will, will get something really good uh, in there. Now I think those lines. I actually want to make those a little bit smaller. So you can do two things here. You can go back into that original texture and modify the original file, or go and locate that object here in the 3D panel. Oh, which is the mesh right here. Transform the texture. And we're going to go into the diffuse. Now, normally I'd go in here and choose edit texture when you yeah. want to edit the texture itself. But just below that, you have a thing called edit UV properties. This allows you to scale on an axis. So now if I Whoa. use the scrubby slider, I can now make those lines a little bit uh, smaller. Nice.
So I didn't even have to adjust it. I'm, I'm basically adjusting the scale within that, um, that particular texture there. Now, I want to make my light a lot brighter here. So let's go to that light section again. So the default is 90% for the intensity. That's not nearly enough. So let's bump that up to about 125 and readjust the positioning of the light here. So now, that's looking really good, but the shadow areas are a little dark. And we want to, now in reality, of course, when you've got, you know, we've got one light source in this image right now, and with the light coming in, the shadows are being left dark because there's no bouncing light in reality. In reality, you've got bouncing light coming off the walls or the floor or something like that. Would that like would create, a kind of, uh, gradient would create a little bit of a reflected light in the shadows, mm -hmm. uh, showing some detail. So to, to, to achieve that, I'm going to go back to... Hi, Udo. Thanks for joining. So yeah, we are live with Corey and uh, Victoria. She will be live in one hour and 15 minutes. One hour and 15 minutes on mm -hmm. Adobe Live. Thanks for joining. And, uh, All right, so now I'm going back to the original texture that I'm using for the for backdrop. The yep. And I'm just going to do a Command-A to copy and Command-C to copy that to the clipboard. And then back over here, we're going to go back to that IBL. Remember that default IBL we've got over yeah, here? Which was very simple. Yeah. So now I'm going to go ahead. Oh, no, I don't want to create. So I'm going to go and choose new texture in the little menu here next to IBL. And we'll click OK. And uh, it creates the document. And I have it set to, the, uh, to do a bla uh, black fill. So that's why it went really dark there. So let's go back and edit the texture. And then just paste that. Uh, texture in there. Now, I don't want it to be full intensity, so let's drop the opacity of that layer to about 50%. Now, <laughs> gotta go eat it's almost like 12 p.m. All right, so 75% uh, uh, on the layer of opacity there, and I'm going to close that and save the changes. So now you can see. See the difference there? I'm going to undo it. See the difference there? So that's before okay. with the really dark shadows, and there it is with the IBL now applied. So we're using the ambient Whoa. light of the background texture to fill in that shadowing. That's so that's making it look a lot, uh, that much more realistic. And what is the circle in the middle? That's the that's just the uh, the, the IBL. Um, oh, that's the IBL. The, the IBL visual uh, aid thing there. So, so Yannick is asking you: Are you simulating a global light with those bars? Global light. A global. global? I'm. Oh yeah. Gobo light, you know, it used to be like. Oh, gobos! Gobos are where you shine, and it shows a logo on the yeah. wall like that. Yeah, you actually, yeah, it's a very similar principle here. In fact, if I took that stripe document and went in there and just made it black and knocked out a logo, yes, then you could project the whatever graphic is onto that wall. So yes, very much the same thing. So uh, what do I want to adjust? Oh, I'm going to adjust the position of that texture there. Uh, let's go in here. Wait, do I want to adjust the light or the texture? Oh, no. Ryan did not know that you could apply textures in the shadow. Yeah. So, all right. So that lighting looks really good. Now, one more thing I want to do with that texture, yeah. that background, is go and reselect it. Okay. And right now, it's 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 a texture and it's got a lot of, a lot of roughness to it. But right now, it's just flat. It's got um, it's not taking the light like a, if you know like a like concrete texture. It's got little dings in it and it's taking the light and creates that kind of roughness on the texture. Right now, this is just a smooth surface that the light is light is being cast on. Yep. So if we go in here into the properties panel for that and go down here to bump properties, and I'm just going to go ahead and assign that original texture, which is called. Make sure. So I'm going to choose a texture that's already applied. So we'll just do that layer one one. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I did the wrong one. It's that other one. Layer one. And that should give us. Let's go ahead and start a render and see. There we go. So. Now you can see the shadows are really cleaning up as the render goes, and again, like I said with Fuse, it gets grainy and then it gets more refined with each pass. But in reality, we I'd want the shadows to soften as they get further away. Yeah. So there's actually a setting for that. If you go in here and again select those lighting features in 3D Panel. The light that you can 
And right down so, here, yeah. you're going to see, um, now, of course, somebody asked about color of the light. Here's where you change that. So the default is white. So if I wanted to make it a red light, so maybe oh, nice. there's, like, there's a red neon light uh, outside or something like that. Pull the intensity up a little bit. So maybe it's a green neon light or something. I don't know. But, but I'm going to stick with a lighter color there. We'll just go with a very light green there. So that is where you change the color. But now, over here under that, you've got the shadow and the softness. So I'm going to bump this up to about 25%. And then if I do the render once more, we should see that shadow get really, yeah, see, also 25 is probably a bit much, but now you can see we're getting a, okay. a dissipation really of the shadow as it travels That's along nice. that wall there. And obviously 25 is way too much. So let's jump, let's drop that down to maybe 10. And there we go. So yeah, that's that's looking a little bit better. But that awesome. is pretty much it. So now oh. when you want it, if you wanted to go in here and change the background, let's say we wanted to do a different background texture. You don't have to go back and start all over again. Um, in fact, if I go in here and go back to the layer of the texture, we'll choose Edit Texture, and it opens up the original document that we started with. So let's just say I want to go and get a different one. Let's say... Mm, well, maybe this one. Mm -hmm. We'll just drag and drop it over. <laughs> drop it in there. So, and that's a, another great. I mean, one of the great things I love about 3D is that you once you take the time to build a scene or a scenario, then you can go in and modify the specific um, textures or settings in like that. And there. So now there's our new texture. If we go ahead and run the render. We're gonna now get a new scene with a new background or a new backdrop. Wow. And, now, of course, we're looking at it at this angle straight on, but if you really wanted to get um, get created with a more dramatic angle, so I'll grab the current view and we'll go a little bit closer and change the angle a little bit. <laughs> nice. So there, yeah, you can see the bars on that now. Um, also, never forget the, the camera settings. If you want to get a wider angle view, I'm going to drop this field of view to about 15. And that gives me a little bit wider Oh, yeah. Camera angle, so we can get a really dramatic angle here. And my soul it, uh, says, okay, it's great to have this now available on YouTube. And actually, there is more because Curry at the end of the show, so in about uh, one hour, he will give you a code, so you can go on his uh, website, yeah. Master FX Training, and because he, you recorded like a full tutorial about full this tutorial and uh, everything I'm showing today, and, 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 and he will share with you a code so you can get it for free, just for you watching Adobe Live. So mm -hmm. it's great. So see, I've changed. I've gone with a much lower angle here, and then I can go in here and modify the position of the head. Maybe I want to have her looking more at the camera. <laughs> so maybe I'll just tilt her head down. There we go. And then just do another render. And that's pretty much, and we'll let that render run through it. But that's pretty much it. It's three elements. We've got the background texture, mm -hmm. the lines that are giving us the shadow effect, and the fuse character. And you can just really create a lot, variety of different uh, dramatic lighting scenarios and camera angles. That's the cool part, too. Don't forget that. Once you create a lighting scenario, look at it from above. Look at it from the bottom. You might get a dramatic angle you just didn't really think of before. So you've got a lot of options um, with, uh, with doing that. Wow, so. it looks great. And I like what you said, like for a photographer to prepare scene you, you have so many options mm. even the camera angle you know, just, okay oh, yeah. so presenting the light this will help me to mm. i need the back shot light i mean you, you get a lot of details so it's really great so. uh maybe it's a good time to pause and maybe review some entries on twitter sure yeah absolutely yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm i'm pretty much done here I'll, I'll get prepped for the next project so yeah that's fine okay let's do this uh, so we invite you uh to uh, create uh, yeah just uh pictures combining uh, several pictures or maybe uh, 3D models uh, using uh, Project Felix that Corey uh, were, was showing uh, yesterday or Adobe Fuse today, everything within Photoshop. Um, and just uh, share these um, pictures on Twitter, adding Adobe Live as a hashtag. Right. And uh, okay, let's review some entries. So we uh, have- like uh, Somebody says her eyes look dead. Cassidy yes, they desire. do in draft mode. When you render, you get a much better, cleaner version of it. So just be aware that things aren't gonna look right when you're in draft mode. So just. Keep that in mind. So, Cassavit Designers is playing with the dinosaur. What do you think about it? What's it? Do you like dinosaur? Oh, he's taking pictures. He's taking pictures. Yeah. Oh, I love it. The blending is great. Yeah. Is that? It's good. Is that a 3D dinosaur? Whoever did that? Uh, oh, he. Cassavit Designer, mm. if you're in the chat, let us know if it's a 3D designer or not. 
Maybe building. not. Maybe not. Oh. Maybe it's a picture. But I guess, yeah. I mean, it's not a real picture of a dinosaur, I guess. It is. Adobe doing any development work on Fuse? There are some things happening. I don't know what the timeline is on that. But the uh, short answer is yes, things are happening. But yeah. uh, we'll have to wait and see what that is and when it is. So. Uh, yeah, so congratulations, Kasavi Designer. Maybe you will get a Creative Cloud subscription for this entry. Uh, we have someone also in the chat uh, who has been very active during your stream. Oh, look at what he did. He did something <coughs> with a bridge, a big wave, a bottle, and some fish. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's nice, huh? Very nice. Something Nature. Very nice. nice. I like the, the energy here. Yeah, where it's impacting the bridge. Yeah. Really, really cool. That's really and also cool. there's a kind of lens flare here. Yeah. Look good job, Simon. Cool. Very good. And someone used Photoshop Mix. Okay. And uh, thanks to Swopes. First time he, he was trying uh, Photoshop Mix on Android. Oh, wow. Looks good, huh? Very nice. Like, very mysterious. I like the... Uh, what I really like that, the moon. Is that using... Yeah, just Photoshop Mix. Or? Yeah. These are not yeah. droids you're looking for. These are, yes, these are not. <laughs> <laughs> um, then uh, Juan Garcia also, he used uh, the model apps <laughs> to create uh, something for. Oh, this is not code, like this is Adobe Live, the film look. Oh, retro, vintage. So, um, you know what, before I do the next thing here, I wanna, I'll do a little bonus thing with Fuse. Um, oh, cool. This is something I was, one of those things I discovered by accident, and when Good I did job, it, Jamie. I was just like, Oh, wow. So, yeah, so at least we had a lot of people trying the mobile apps. Thanks to uh, you. That's good. That'd be cool if I and maybe one more. Do you like this one? Revolution? Wow. Oh, yeah, very nice. Nice, huh? Yeah. Good job. I love, I love things that have scale. You know, it really gives oh, yeah. you a sense of scale <laughs> and how big things are, and that's really cool. And I like yeah. that. Keep yeah. sharing. Twitter, it's awesome. So, okay. All right. Um, so I wanted to computer. show one more thing with Fuse. Um, so I'm going to go and I'm just going to use a character I already created. So let's go ahead and get my, I'm in Photoshop, of course. So I'm going to get my libraries here. Fortune. <laughs> Reminds me of Fortune. Yeah, Fortune was a, a product that you, you released yesterday. Which one? Fortune. You remember this one? Fo yes, you're yeah. right. Yes, Fortune. <laughs> and I didn't save it. I'm going to have to rebuild no. it. Yeah, I didn't save oh. that, that file. I'm going to have to redo it. So yeah, it's okay. All right. So this next part, um, this what I want to show you, you have to do this with a, an undressed character. Now don't worry, these characters have underwear on, so there's, it's not that n uh, naughty. But I'm just going to use this guy here. So what I did was I just went ahead and created a Fuse character, uh, full body, no clothing, anything like that, because I just needed to have just the one mesh texture. You remember earlier I showed you it had the body mat and the sh uh, shoes and, yes. and the top and bottoms. So I, all I need is just the body in this case. So that's all I brought over into um, Photoshop here. So I'm gonna put background layer, fill it with black. Now reselect the layer. So now again with the 3D panel and properties panels, two critical panels when you're working with 3D here. Go and select the body mat. So yeah, there you see, it's just the one ton, one thing. There was that list of items before because we had all those accessor accessories, but now we just got this one. So we're gonna go over here to the illumination property. Now I mentioned earlier, I talked about lighting. You can it? actually create an illumination property here. Illuminati. So I'm gonna go to the original texture and I just wanna make sure it's the same size and using the same oh. wire mesh, that's another critical thing here. So I'm just gonna do a Command A and copy to the clipboard. This is Command or Control C. And we'll close that. So we're oh, gonna go. Down, Simon. Really great job. He say Simon say oh, thank you for the review. Gives me courage to carry on. Yeah, carry on, Simon. Great nice. work. Good. He did the bridge with them. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do here is go to the illumination properties, click on the swatch, and I'm gonna give this a color illumination right there. And now it's he's radioactive. Oh yes, yeah. he's just emitting what green happened? light now. Uh, you can still see some of the detail of the skin, so I'm going to go back to that original texture and then just fill this with black. Ooh. So you're going to fill the original texture with black, and then you're going to go in here into that diffuse property and just give it a really bright color. Okay. Now we're going to go to the opacity property just a little uh, further down and create a new texture based on what we copied a moment ago. So there we are. Oh, it's not the same size. Let's 
Okay, there it is. For some reason I wasn't saving it before. So again, new texture. And this is on the opacity property, remember that. And... So Miss Haring, so all the meshes and wires for 3D objects, we, we got them from Adobe Fuse. It's, uh, mm. it's also a character coming from Adobe Fuse and you get all the properties in the 3D layer. So I'm inside of the opacity uh, texture here. Now opacity works like a layer mask. White al allows things to be visible, gray has some transparency, and then black is hidden altogether. Now right now it's filled with white and it's revealing the entire illuminated character here. And you can see the wireframe here. Now what I'm going to do is actually bring in a texture, and this is just this kind of cool um, <laughs> texture here. Now first I'm going to remove the color, and then do a levels adjustment just to boost the contrast here. I want to make the gray, er gray areas a lot darker. Okay. Something like that. Really accentuate the, the lines and then the little, all the little data here. Now I don't necessarily want to use the uh, globe element here, so I'm just going to select mostly half of the image right up until that little mm. globe element and then just copy that to the clipboard. And then that I'm going to paste right inside of here. And let's scale it to fit in the document. So now when I save, we're going to only see that oh. texture now through nice. the... Uh, it looks like a video projector. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, so it's, it's like a character wearing this illuminated suit. And if you go in here and apply any of the animation properties, you get this kind of cool character. Wow, that's nice. That's wearing like this, like, it almost looks like a mocap. Mo motion capture type of element there, so. <laughs> but uh, it's actually, um, what I ended up doing with this when I discovered this, and uh, I think it'll work. Let me go ahead and do. And you can actually search. You know, you, there's categories of animations and poses, but you can actually do a search here. So there was one I got, It's and there it is, crawl. So this is a very, oh, let me reset. Is swimming? I know, crawling. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of like a yeah. Spider-Man-ish. I have oh, a move here. So what would the, what would be the name of this uh, su superhero? <coughs> I'm sure they will find a good name in the chat. So I'm going to rotate my camera view here. Oh. <laughs> nice. But you can also It's just funny when you when you discover an effect and you're like, "Oh, I wonder if it'll work if I try this." And then you try that and so now he's kind of climbing up the wall, but now if I go ahead and uh, apply a little bit of reflection on the ground plane there. That look right? Okay. And if we do a little bit of a render. Oh yeah, we can see. Oh yeah, here we go. Wow. Uh, let's set that. A lot higher. There it is. Okay, you can see it much better now. So, one of the animations not moving. Can you take these fuse characters into After Effects? Uh, no. No. Um, I mean, you could bring them into After, not and have them move around like you're seeing here. I mean, you could bring it out as a regular Photoshop layer into Photoshop. It will be a static image there. So there, you can see the characters reflecting on the surface there. So, so another creative use of a fused character is being able to go in here and mask the effect. Um, it looks great. Create, a, create a, a really interesting effect like that. So I just wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> something to experiment with. So, All right. Now, I've got something else. Are there, are there any burning man. questions before I go to the next thing here? Ooh, Matrix, Matrix Man, yeah. yeah. I did think of that <laughs> uh, whenever I was playing with it. So, Okay, so Green Lantern, yeah? We won't mention Green Lantern ever again. No. no. <laughs> if we're talking about the movie, so look. So. <laughs> All right. Um, so next, I wanted to show you uh, something really cool. Um, there's a server. Have you heard of Pixel Squid, right? Of what? Pixel Squid. Pixel Squid. They are actually a. Pixel Squid. Huh? Pixel Squid rocks. Pixel Squid rocks, rocks definitely. I so just for those of you that don't know, I'll just show you real quick. Pixel Squid is a site that offers up 3D models. Uh, that you can use in Photoshop. Now, they're not what? fully 
editable 3D models in the normal sense of working in 3D in uh, Photoshop. But they've got a collection of a lot of different categories. And what's cool is they got a lot of movie stuff. Now, everybody knows I'm a big movie fan. But they've got a, um, a lot of Star Wars ones. In fact, you see they've got a lot of things from Rogue One here. Um, some, a variety of spaceships and stuff like that. In fact, I think I still have it here. Maybe not. Uh, I did a Star Wars one. I'll, I'll, I'll find it later, but I don't want to. Okay, I don't want to digress too much. So yeah, you just scroll through, and there's a lot of really cool models in here that you can um, download and actually use in Photoshop. Now. A lot of them are free, so you can uh, definitely go in there and play with a lot of these things. But what I want to show you today is something cool with uh, Wolverine from X Men. Oh, Wolverine. So, because I actually have the Wolverine claws in Pixel Squid. Oh, okay. Now, they've created a plugin for Photoshop that actually allows you to integrate your stuff uh, right here inside Photoshop. So, I'm going to go and create. Uh, so, it's a bit like what uh, Adobe Stock is doing for uh, Project Felix. Anyway, right. A kind of uh, repository of 3D models that mm -hmm. you can import. That's nice. And uh, uh, by the way, we will be giving away a credit card subscription to someone in the chat in about five minutes. So mm. Stay tuned. So uh, I'm going to start with my libraries here. I'm going to go here. I got a stock image. It's Adobe stock of this hand. It's just a simple hand that's going down. And I want to add the claws in a very realistic way okay. to create a, this kind of movie poster effect. Oh, that's interesting. So here so you will uh, try to... So I'm so going to add 3D elements to a. I'm going to bring in the 3D pixel picture. squid claws and then blend them into <laughs> the hand here. Okay. So it's going to be really cool. And I'm going to add a little. I had a little. I got a really cool brush and layer style technique for blood. I'm going to we're going to go very subtle trail of blood coming down his hand there. It's not too gruesome, so don't worry. Not too gross. So, um, so there's the hand I'm going to use. Again, it's just a simple Adobe stock photo. So I'm going to go now go and do file new. Let's create a new document and build this in roughly the format of a movie poster. So now I'm going to take this. I'm actually going to rotate it because I want to have the hand kind of holding down. Okay. So we'll go and rotate that counterclockwise. And then I'm just going to drag and drop it into my working file here. There it is. I'm actually going to change my background here so I can better see what's going on. There we go. Okay. So now, obviously, I drag it over. It's, it's large because it's high res. So I'm going to press Command T and then Command Zero. If you didn't know this trick, when you press Command T and, and activate Free Transform, press Command Zero and it will expand the document, so you can see the control box. So now I'm going to hold down Shift Option and scale the hand down. Let's position it right up here, mm -hmm. and right about like that. We obviously we need room for the claws to be down here. So there we go. <coughs> All right, so the hand is in position, looks really good. So now I'm going to go to the um, open up my uh, Pixel Squid plugin. And now, if you sign up for Pixel Squid, you definitely want to do this because it allows you to interactively bring in the models and manipulate. Because you can manipulate the angle and position. You can't really control the lighting or anything like that, but you can change the angle of it. So I'm going to go to the window and go to extensions, Pixel Squid. So Rob is asking, uh, and with the Pixel Squid, can you use the models in Felix? I don't think so. No. Because they are not optimized. So, uh, again, all the models that you see on Adobe Stock for Project Felix have been optimized. So, yeah. That's why uh, there is no link today. And But mm. Project Felix is still new, you know. So, uh, I guess th they were able to build their plugins for uh, for Photoshop because mm. Photoshop, they, they have this uh, API, like this SDK mm. where you can build your own extensions. It's not the case today for Project Felix because it's so, so mm. new. Oh, yeah, you have a lot of models here. Yeah, so there, there's all, a lot of Star Wars. Look, they even got <laughs> the Proton Pack from Ghostbusters. <laughs> nice. I mean, they've got a lot of really cool movie stuff in here. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit for a little bit more. And so there's my Wolverine claws right there. So I'm just going to click on that and add it to the scene here. So you can see it shows up in my design panel here. Now, while the Pixel Squid panel is open, you notice it changed. I can actually click inside here and maneuver the positioning, and it's going to update it in the document whenever you select a new position. See there. But you're limited in your movement. Notice if I go to a certain oh angle, yeah. it stops. So I'm just limited in where I can put it. So you got to get creative here with how you want to um, make it work. So I'm going to reset the positioning here. 
So I can't rotate it full 360 to have this because I got to have these, you know, right at yeah. the hand right here. So you think, well, I can't rotate it in 3D, but you can rotate the layer. So just go ahead and just do this. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Done. Easy. But now <laughs> you're thinking. Your thinking in 3D is now reverse. So if you change the angle in one direction, it's going to go the opposite direction oh, on the yeah. document here. So You're just right. keep okay. that in mind as you're working. So now what I want to do is I'm going to reposition. Now I'm keeping, obviously, the spacing of these claws is very different from the, the hand here. We're going to have to adjust that. So all I'm paying attention to is the last claw here and where it's positioned in relation to that area between the knuckles there because that's okay. where the claw would be coming out of the hand there. And um, so I'm paying attention to scale. So I'm going to scale the overall object a little bit more. And I actually think that angle uh, works really well. Actually, let's yep. is it rotate this. Uh, try different angles. But yeah, I think that angle I had just now just w w was working pretty well. So there we can see. Yeah, that'll work. So now you'll notice also here in the Pixel Squid panel, it's got a resolution setting which is in low, which is basically like working in draft mode. And then you've got shadows. We don't see it, we can kind of see it right here. Because we flipped the object, the shadows are now at the top. So see those little shadow elements right there? So that's what you're seeing in the preview here. We don't need the shadows at all. So let's go ahead and just toggle that off. And then I'm going to go ahead and toggle on high resolution. And you'll see it gets a much cleaner. So now we've got a much cleaner version of the, uh, of the claw elements there. So that looks really good. Now, notice here in the Layers panel that it, uh, it arrives as a smart object. So if you double click on it, you can actually open the document. But there's the, the original claws themselves. But I'm just going to go ahead and rasterize the smart object because we've got to manipulate the positioning of the other two claws because they're obviously not lined up right. So I'm just going to go just right click on it, choose rasterize layer. Now before I do that, I'm going to do a levels adjustment on these just to really kind of darken up contrast in there. Mm -hmm. That looks really good. Makes it a little bit more realistic looking. And I'm now I'm going to use my lasso tool to select oh, the no individual way. elements and then just nudge it right over, right in position. Now I'm also going to, we gotta keep in mind, I'm gonna rotate it slightly because we gotta keep in mind the anatomy here. These claws are going, they come out of his arm obviously, and we're talking about fiction of course, but we're talking, <laughs> but it is Wolverine. So you gotta think about the angle when they go down the arm and come out of the claw, you wanna line the blades up as best you can for that. So that is, and I'm, not, I'm just getting nitpicky here, but that's me. <laughs> but now I'm gonna take that third claw and just move it into the shadow and angle this one a little bit more. Because when we brought him in from Pixel Squid, they were all parallel He's very to angry. each other. I can tell. Yeah, so yeah, th this guy's really angry. So I'm actually going to adjust the angle. Um, the center one a little bit more. Let's go like that and nudge it over a little bit. There we go. So now the, they're, they're in position and look really good. Now, we need to start blending them. So now one of the, um, of course, age-old tricks with visual effects is that you hide in the shadows. And fortunately, this image gives us that right where the areas where this will blend in. So we don't need to get too detailed with where the, the, the blade is coming right out of the skin there. We don't need to create the cut and everything like that. We're just going to hide it in the shadow. Easy. Um, so I'm going to throw a layer mask on the layer containing those claw elements, and then I'm just going to get a very soft edge brush. Oop. And set the foreground color to black, and then we're just going to really just fade the claw right into the shadow. The mask. Yeah. Right there. And now that looks like it's mm. coming right out of the hand there. And you found a beautiful picture of the hand on the beast stock. Yeah, I got really lucky like with it. the the yeah. hand itself. Yeah, it looks really, really good there. So it's there really is the, the hands basically coming out of the claws. It looks really good, but we're going to add a little bit more detail to that to sell the effect a little bit more. Because in reality, you, you would expect a little bit of a, you know, um, beveling of the skin, oh, in yeah. a sense, to, like, uh, it's under like it's protruding right under the skin layer oh, there. So you want to be able point. to see that. So I've got a really cool trick to, to achieve that. Before that, let's go back. Actually, I'm going to go back to the hand layer. Here's a cool trick to really kind of create some contrast 
and grittiness to the hand. Just make a duplicate of that layer. Remove the color, just press Shift Command U or Shift Control U, and then to change the blend mode to hard light. And drop the opacity to about 75%. So that just adds a, a grittiness to the hand. So there we go. Very nice. All right, now, Let's darken up the blades a little bit more by kind of doing the same thing. I'm going to make a duplicate of the layer. Let's drop that to multiply and down like to 50% yeah, here. It's more intense. So it's a little less uh, intense there. Yeah, intense. very nice. So now let's zoom in right again where the hand and the blades are coming out. So now I'm going to create a new blank layer. Okay. And um, fortunately, I already have the layer style saved, so I'm just going to go ahead and apply it. I'll show you how this, the layer style is put together, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and apply this here. And that's another cool trick, too. If you're playing, and I'm a big fan of layer styles, and if you're playing around with a variety of mixing layer styles and stuff like that, and you get an effect you really like, yeah. save it <laughs> to your styles panel. And uh, that way you can, uh, you can still modify it after you apply it, but at least you've done, you've got all the legwork out of the way, and you can save that style. So now I've, I've applied this layer style to the layer, but there's nothing on the layer to show the effect. But if I go ahead and just start painting something, Ooh. you can see a little indentation in the skin there. Nice. Now, before I apply the effect, let's just see what's going on with this layer style. So it's all it is is a simple bevel and emboss. Okay. And you can see what I've got going on here. I've got a very high setting for the depth, the size, the color is what's critical here. So I've got a linear burn, very dark shadow going on to kind of um, match what's going on with the shadows in the hand. What I did for the highlight is I actually went and sampled the highlight color on the skin itself. Oh yeah. And that will play the, play the, uh, the part of the highlight in my bevel here. And I've got that at hard light at 50% there. So that's all there is. Simple <laughs> as that. Simple well, layer style. Now I'm just going to start right on the uh, where the blade pencil, is going into the hand here. Right. As you pen, so we will give you, uh, I will give a wear credit card subscription to someone in the chat. Uh, you just need to type a keyword in the chat, and the keyword is the name of the tool that you used first during this show. Ah. Okay, so you need to type the name of the tool that Curry used first at the beginning mm -hmm. of the show. And uh, also make sure to subscribe to the Creative Cloud YouTube channel. It will give you five times more chances to win. So make sure to uh, subscribe to our channel so you'll be notified mm -hmm. every time there is a new live stream and uh, every time we publish a new video. Uh, so yeah, so I give you two minutes to find the name of this tool, the first one he used during the show. All right. So now you just bent. So um, I wanted to point out one more thing. I'm just going to paint here because <laughs> the layer style is there. But in order to see it and blend it with the hand, you've got to go over here to the fill setting, oh. which is just under the opacity. Now, if you've ever wondered what's the difference between opacity and fill, quite simply, opacity affects the entire layer, everything that's going on in there. <laughs> and it's what's well, letting it's really yeah, letting found it. Yeah. Um, but uh, you need to be able to see the layer style effect. So fill actually allows you to reduce the opacity of the original pixels on the layer and just see the layer style. So if I bring this down to zero, there you're going to see the effect now emerge. So I'm going to delete that. And then we're just going to follow the contours of the blades here and just paint up the hand. Nice. Quickly and easily. And there we've got. And that really oh sells God. the effect of the hand of the blades protruding from the skin there. And I'm gonna add a layer mask it and that and just give it a little bit of a fade at the top here. So it's not an abrupt stop, so like it just kind of gradually uh, goes down. And you can go in there and adjust that layer style. If I wanted to make the depth a little bit harsher, a little bit softer, and like that. So you can go in there and make those adjustments in there. That one's yeah, so good. I think they found the name of the tool. Oh, yes. It was Adobe Fuse. So now we will ask Nightbot to pick someone who gave the right answer. And uh, this person will receive a one year Creative Cloud subscription. If you're already a Creative Cloud member, it will extend your membership, adding 12 months. Mm -hmm. And so, Nightbot, please. The winner is Sulajit Bomik. Uh, congratulations, Sulajit. You get a one year Rats. Creative Cloud subscription. Please share in the chat what is your Twitter handle, and I will contact you. Okay. Nice. But I will add a message now. Congrats. Surajit. All Mr. right. Uh, so one more element Dole. to add to this poster while he's doing that. Um, I wanted to add a, I discovered a really cool effect for blood. 
Now I just want to add like just a small trail of blood coming down the hand here, like he just finished a fight or something like that. You really have. Can little... you make it green? Huh? Can you make it green? The Gre blood. Green blood? Ooh, we could. Yeah, actually, you could. You know, like because it, it, it could, he could be the cousin of this Matrix guy. That's true. Maybe they live in a world where everything is green. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do that. Uh, where is? <laughs> ah, huh. ooh, nice. Is that it? That's not it. What is it? Yeah, that's it. okay. Yeah, congratulations, Rajit. Yeah, let me know what is your Twitter handle, and I will contact you on Twitter today. Is it that one? No, that's that one. Okay. So this layer style, um, I, I've got the preset here, but I'm, I'm going to open it up and show you. There's a lot more going on in this particular style for this effect. You know? So I've got a bevel and emboss, and there's an inner shadow, an inner glow, an outer glow, and a drop shadow. These are all playing the part of generating this effect. And it's something I always talked about with layer styles is that don't always take them for their face value. That's what, I mean, it's what their name is. If it says shadow, it doesn't necessarily have to be a shadow. And it doesn't have to, you know... You know, it can be a photo effect. You know, a lot yeah. of people think it just does the one thing and that's it. Really get experimenting with this, but I'll show you what this effect looks like. So I'm gonna let me get my brush set. I'm gonna get a rather hard edge brush here. It's a regular round brush. Now I'm gonna go in here into the brush options and in shape dynamics, I'm gonna go over here and just nudge up the size jitter a little bit. Now I'm gonna do that slightly, and you notice it gets that little bit of rough edge to it because we're gonna be drawing this effect down the hand here, and you'd expect some di disruption of the liquid flow from the skin texture and even mm -hmm. the hairs on the skin. So now if I do this, I'm actually going to add pen pressure to the setting as well. And I'm using a very dark red color here. And if I just start painting, here you can see very cool blood effect going up there. So now I'm just going to start at the very top, a little bit out of view. And I'm just going to follow the contour. Get really close because it's really cool to see it just unfold right in right before your eyes. Yeah, that looks a bit darker. So I'm just going to start at the top here and and as I, I increase pressure, the flow will get bigger. Okay, so this is just a, an effect on the layer? Just a layer style, that's all. The notice as it's blending, oh. So the color is also in the yeah, it's one of the effects. Yeah, I'm using a, a red base color, but and it's picking up the effect. But as it goes... Oh, it's and, a base color. Now, oh, something else I didn't see. My oh, The yeah. layer blend mode is in linear burn. That's critical. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I did not mention that. In addition to the layer style, the I layer like, blend wow. mode is <laughs> linear burn. Because that's smart. that allows it to react to the lighting in the scene. Notice how it's bright up here, and it's showing um, the skin through and giving me a lighter color. But as I get into the dark areas, it gets darker, and it only picks up the light in the scene here. And as we go down, we'll have it kind of trickle down the blade here. Maybe go add a couple of drops there. So there you have wow, it's amazing. the violent Wolverine yeah. coming to theaters soon. I wasn't paid by the studio to say that. No, But now, again, th the whole point here is, of course, Pixel Squid being able to integrate um, your elements in there, but and you've got to do some really compositing magic to make it work. Again, it's not normal 3D in the, in the normal sense of Photoshop, but it certainly does give you uh, a lot of possibilities uh, to be able to do something like that. So, Isn't that yeah. neat. Good job. Great. Cool. Oh my god, yeah. Any questions? Super realistic. Out? This is a bloody brilliant. There, I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're still live with Curry for 30 minutes. Um, yeah, don't yeah. hesitate if you have any questions. They are all like. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm gonna lose save my one. mind. All right, so 30 minutes. May not be enough time to do what I'm going to do next, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. So Ooh. let's try. How did you get the brush? You have a highlight. So it was part of the layer styles. And if you watch a replay by default, yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, the replay of uh, this video will be available on the Adobe Creative Cut YouTube channel. Uh, also on Adobe Live. If you check on the right, there is a replay tab already available. And uh, we will be live in 40 minutes with uh, Victoria Seymour. And then, so yeah, let's say we end the live in 30 <coughs> minutes. It means that maybe 10 minutes after, the, the replay will be available. It's like super fast. Mm. All right, so oh. this one I want to show real quick. So I know Terry will like this one because I sent him this. And now. Yes. So um, I was really 
And a lot of people ask me where I get my ideas, you know. And the funny thing is, um, this idea actually came when I was just surfing on Netflix. No, was it Netflix or Amazon? And the graphic came up for the TV show, The Flash. And it was a really cool 3D effect, and it had a really cool lighting and everything going on in it. So I thought, oh, maybe I could do that in Photoshop. Now, I will admit, I've never seen the show. <laughs> I was... I, I always do these. I'm always inspired to do these really cool effects on the shows I see. And then people ask me, it's like, do you like the show? And it's like, honestly, I've never seen it. Because <laughs> I did something I did something from an uh, effect I saw inspired by Game of Thrones. Okay. And I've never, ever seen an episode of Game of Thrones. So. But people, I just think it's funny. But you don't really necessarily need to know the show to be able to be inspired by what you, what you see about it. But this is a really good example of how you can really start and build... 3D from scratch. You know, up till now I've used like I started with Fuse, built the character, brought it in, and that was uh, that got us started. And then of course Pixel Squid got we got the element in here. Now yep. we're going to take a look at building it entirely from scratch, starting with just these paths to build the logo. So what I've got here, and I've gone, I've went ahead and used the start file. I don't want to have to create the path again because we are short enough. I've got 35 minutes to do this. Can it be done? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got two paths here, um, two shape layers or two path layers rather. Oh, no, they are shape layers. One is the outer ring circle of the logo, and then the other is simply the lighting, the lightning bolt element. Yeah. So let's start with the lightning bolt element first. So I'm going to go in here, and let's change the color of it. So it is a shape layer, but it's, uh, it's right now it's got a stroke on it, so let's uh, set the stroke to none. And then for the color, I'm just going to use this kind of bright yellow here. Oh, no. I don't want to do the stroke. I want to do a fill. There we go. Okay, there it is. So simple um, fill on the, the shape layer here. It's uh, done with the yellow. So now we're going to go to 3D, new 3D extrusion from selected path. Okay. And that's going to go ahead and extrude the object. And if I grab my camera and rotate it here. Oh, here we go. So there you can see the extrusion. Let's turn the background off. There we go. Okay. I mean, so it there. It doesn't keep the color. Mm -hmm. It doesn't keep the color when you extrude. You know, it's not yellow. Oh, the, well, I mean the extrusion? Yeah. No, yeah, it doesn't do the extrusion. We're not going to see the extrusion in this particular case, but yes, you know, the color you fill in the layer only applies to the front and back face. Okay. So if I uh, rotate it all the way around here, no, it's in shadow, of course, because of the lighting. Oh, yeah, you'll light. see the back face is also that same yellow fill. Okay. You have to manually go in and adjust the color of uh, the extrusion if you want to do that. But like I said, in this case, we're not going to need it. In fact, I'm going to go into my properties panel again. Oh. And with the shape selected here in the 3D panel, we're going to bring the extrusion depth down. So you can see it's a live change here. So we're going to bring that down to a very small number. In fact, we're going to do like 10. So we really don't really see the extrusion much at all. Also, I'm not going to be needing the ground plane shadow that you got right here. So to get rid of that, uh, select the environment property in the 3D panel. And then let's go to the ground plane shadow, which is default at 60%. Just knock that down to zero. And furthermore, I don't need the ground plane that's uh, grid itself, so you can turn that off by going to the view menu, go to show, and then just uncheck ground plane. So now what I want to do is apply a bevel to this shape, so it has you know like some really sharp angles to it. And the cool thing about 3D um, beveling versus layer style beveling it is that it's a true bevel. I mean, layer styles give you the illusion of beveling effect yeah, on text. I see. Um, but here we're going to actually yeah. apply like it. If you move the camera around, you will really see. Uh, yeah, you'll see it flat. Yeah, you're seeing the illusion of dimension. But here we're actually going to create dimension by going with the shape one selected in the 3D panel. You've got these tabs at the top of the properties panel. Click on the third one over, which is the cap settings. And here you'll see you've got bevel settings and inflate properties. So you can, uh, you can actually inflate the front face and give it like a little bit of a curve to it. We're not going to do that in this case, but we are going to go ahead to the bevel width and just nudge it up to the full 100%. Oh, look at that. And then there we've got that cool shape uh, <laughs> uh, taken. Uh, That's that. great. And uh, yes, Yann Eric, if you want to use Pixel Squid for the Adobe Live competition on Twitter, yeah, of course. At the end, it's in Photoshop, so that's great. So uh, so that's um, my little lightning bolt element. So now I'm going to go, while I'm here, I'm going to go to the shape mesh. Now I'm looking at, because we maxed out the beveling, we are no longer looking at the front face, which is the front inflation here. We are actually looking at the entire bevel. So you want to make sure you have front bevel selected to modify the surface properties. Ooh. So once you have that, 
That, I can't tell you how many times that got me, even though I knew yeah. that. I'd select, I'd I, kept, select I would, by habit, the select front inflation and go in here and modify the properties. I'm like, nothing's happening. What the hell? And then you, then I realized, oh, I'm on the wrong face. <laughs> so, again, make sure that bevel material is selected. Hi, We're, Chris. Welcome. Yeah, we are reading the YouTube chat. So, if you want right. to ask questions to Curry, it's on YouTube. <laughs> yes, throw your questions while I'm out of here. Um, so, all I'm going to do here is increase the shine and reflection, put them at around 50%. And we're going to get into adjusting the lighting in just a little bit. But for now, I'm just going to set things up as far as the reflection properties go. So, for the moment, that is looking good for the arrow element. Now, I'm going to turn that layer off for the moment and let's go back to this ring layer here. Now, before I create this element, So you'll notice here in the paths panel, it's showing me the ring. Now the active area is the ring itself. The inside area is actually inactive. Hi Brian, Th thanks for joining. So uh, Curry is working in uh, in Photoshop with uh, 3D elements, uh, like uh, actually vector path that you convert mm -hmm. into uh, 3D objects, and uh, he's uh, about to reproduce. Yep. Something that looks like the Flash logo, like the superhero. And I will say, when you're creating elements from scratch in 3D, um, doing it from vector shapes is going to give you the cleanest objects. You can create it from a pixel-based selection, oh. but you're going to have that rough roughness to the edging there. Yeah. So um, when you're creating, especially logo elements like this, graphics that are going to be really, really nice and sharp, you want to create them from vector uh, shapes like this. And uh, yeah, good point, Francis. We, we don't have uh, news from our winner, Surajit, so it was like more than 10 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. So yes, we, we have to reroll. Hopefully we will have someone more active, and this is uh, Tina Tuli Design. <laughs> Tina Tuli Design, if you are in the chat, oh, yeah, say right hi nice. and share your Twitter handle. And Tina Tuli Design, I think, uh, I'm talking about the same person, will be the guest on the next uh, Adobe Live stream. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> yeah, she will be a guest. So, um, before I create the 3D with this particular shape, I'm, I selected the inside um, ring here, the, in, the inside shape, and I'm just going to press Command J, and that's going to copy <laughs> that to a new layer because I want to create a separate um, 3D element for the inside area of the logo. So, so just copy that up. Now I'm going to go back to the ring layer. And I'm going to go ahead and let's give it, uh, let's adjust the fill color. That's what I was going to do. So this is like before. This has got a stroke on it. So we'll make, set the stroke to none, and then we'll give this, um, actually, we're going to give this one a black fill. And you're going to see why in just a minute. Um, so there's the black ring. So now we're just going to take that and go ahead and create a 3D extrusion from that. So go to 3D, new mesh. I'm sorry, no th new 3D extrusion from Selected Path once more. There we go. All right. So um, just like it did with the other one, the extrusion depth is obviously a lot more than I need it to be. So let's go ahead and back to selecting the ellipse shape. And then in the Properties panel, we'll just dial down that extrusion. Nice. So Suman, you, you cannot find your uh, you cannot find pro Project Felix in your Creative Cloud App Manager. Uh, you should check the system requirements. For instance, on Windows, if you're on Windows, you need at least Windows 10. Um, so if you go on the Project Felix page on Adobe.com, you will find the system requirements. Maybe you, you don't match them. Sorry for this. And thank you, Tina, for sharing your Twitter handle. So there is the outer ring shape and i've gone ahead and just converted to 3d and we'll adjust it in just a minute but let's go ahead and create the third element which is the inside circle which is uh, what i copied from the other layer a moment ago now i need to change the uh, active area here let's go to the so combined shapes there we go so this is just a regular circle um as you can see in the past panel, it's just a white circle well the white indicates the active area uh, so we are going to give that a fill, just like we did with the other shapes. But in this case, I'm going to do um, kind of an off-white, a very, very light gray here. When you're doing 3D objects and they're going to be white, don't fill them with pure white because you're, you, you want to have some grayness to it so that when it, ha when it receives specular highlights and other things like that, you want to be able to see those things. On a pure okay. white surface, you're not going to see that. So probably 30, 35% gray is a good place uh, when you're doing a white element like that. Okay. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and do this, new 3D extrusion from Selected Path as well. 
when I'm doing these types of things, especially logos that have multiple parts, like in this case, we're building this out of three different 3D elements. Um, I like to build the parts and then merge them and then do the dressing of textures and lighting and everything like that. You want to make sure you get all the elements in place first. Um, so you would merge the layers like... Uh, yeah, I'm uh, actually like going to merge. Yeah. yeah, like earlier when I merged the layer, I did. I had the top layer selected, yeah. the command E. You can actually select more than two layers. You okay. can actually select three or four and merge them all at the same time, which is what I'll do in just a moment. Great. Um, but for this particular layer, uh, of course, I need to adjust the extrusion. And we'll just dial that down. Now, notice, and I've, I've kind of mentioned this, but I am really pointing out, when I'm adjusting the angle of view so I can adjust the extrusion, there's a difference between moving the camera and moving the object. So just, I'll just digress for a brief moment and tell you. So when current view is selected, you move, the, move it around, you're moving the camera. I mean, imagine there's an object and you walk around it and you're basically changing your angle of view by repositioning yourself. That's mm -hmm. essentially what you're doing when you're moving the camera. But if you move the object, if I have the ellipse uh, one here selected and I move it around, you notice the ground plane doesn't move with the, the object because okay. we're just, the camera is now static and we're moving the object itself. So that is a difference because I've had a lot of people um, tell me, well, when I hit default camera, it doesn't look right because you, what ha probably happens is people They'll move the object around, and then they'll go and grab the camera and move it around. And then when you hit default camera, you're like, oh, no, it's not in the right position. But don't fret. If that happens, you just simply select the object itself. Over in the Properties panel, you've got this tab. very last tab at the top here is the Coordinates tab. Oh. Just hit Reset Coordinates, Move to Ground. Boom. You reset back in its original home position there. So just be aware of that. So that's the difference between moving the camera and moving the object so. itself. So, All right, so on this, I'm gonna go over to the cap tab. This is where I applied the bevel a while ago. This time we're gonna do a little bit of an inflate here. So I'm gonna go down to the inflate section and go to the strength and push this out a little bit. Ooh. And you can see it just kind of inflates the front face, just bulges it out a little. And if I just move my camera a little bit there, you can see what's going on there. Okay. So just gonna get a little bulge out just there. The face. Just yeah, very much. Yeah, we don't want it just to be front. Okay. You know, flat. We need it to want it to kind of take the light. And the cool thing about the curved surface is that it takes the light a little bit differently. <coughs> and shadows tend to bend around it, the lighting, everything like that. So you got a really, really realistic effect there. So now I'm gonna change the layer order here because we want that circle element uh, behind the, uh, the the flash element there. So now. Three, um, three 3D layers now. We've got the bolt, the, the inside element, and the outer ring. Now, before I merge these together, here's an all too critical step. Go up here to go to File and do Save As. <laughs> and save your document. <laughs> because um, there have been times when I've, I've gone and merged 3D objects and it, you know, it'll hit a bug and crash. You know? okay. And yeah, you, don't wanna have to, you don't wanna have to start all over with what you've done at this point. Because we've obviously done quite a few things here at this point. So save yeah. yourself some time by but so before you do any major things with 3D. It's a pro tip. Yeah, <laughs> very much so. There is the auto save in Photoshop. I get that, but it's on it's on a, it's on an increment of time, right? Mm. Um, so if you do if it if it, let's say it did the auto save and you you crashed it two minutes later, you're gonna you're only gonna recover what was saved 20 minutes prior or 20 to 30 minutes prior to that. So just be aware of that. So still consciously save when you can. So now uh, I've got those three objects. I'm going to select the top one, hold down the shift key, and select the bottom one. So they're all three layers are selected. Simply press Command or Control E, and it's going to merge them all together. And it's going to mer it's going to align them all together, as you can see right there. So now we got to reposition these elements um, in relation to each other in the same scene. So if I grab my current view once again, I'll rotate this around. So there's the elements. Now we just got to reposition them. So I'm just going to leave my angle right about here. Mm -hmm. And you can you can select the elements inside the 3D panel. So if I select the shape, you can see there it highlights it. It's also um, content sensitive. If I just click on the object itself, it also activates it. So I'm just going to grab the blue arrow widget here, and that's just going to allow me to nudge this arrow forward on that axis. Now you can see see how the shadow's curving mm -hmm. as yeah. it moves away from it? So we're Very getting nice. that really cool effect there. So that's looking really nice. <clears throat> so reset this. Obviously, now I need to scale this inside circle element so there. Mitch is asking, like, when you create uh, 3D objects like this, can you export 
to 3D objects, so you can reuse them in other... You can export them as a 3D format, uh, yeah. like an OBJ or something like that. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. use them in other tools. Yeah, yeah. now uh, I can't guarantee that any texturing or lighting scenarios that you create um, uh, beyond this will be retained if you bring it to another 3D application. But you can save it in a format and bring it in there, at least the base shapes. Mm -hmm. So, In some cases, you might see that textures and lightings do translate over, but um, it all depends on the application, of course. Mm -hmm. you know, so. So now I'm going to go back to, now that I've got all the elements here, I'm going to go back to the outer ring element. And we're going to apply the same bevel we did a moment ago. So I'm going to go to that cap section, do a 100% bevel on here. And we can't see it a lot because of the it being black, of course. But let's go ahead and uh, adjust the shine and reflection here. And what we are seeing now, if I oh, go yeah. and select environment, and you get that little orb in the middle, that little orb in the center represents the, the default IBL. So if I click and drag around, I can move that IBL around. Now you can see how it's interacting on that outer mm -hmm. ring element there. But now what I want to do is I want to put a kind of cr a shiny chrome effect on that outer ring. And normally I do this with an IBL when, I wanna get, when I'm creating an, um, a chrome object in and of itself. Uh, but the problem with the IBL is that it's a global change. It affects the entire object. I only want this effect to happen to just the ring itself. So in order to do that, we'll go and select that front bevel material. And there was a good question by Jelmer asking, like, uh, when you have a three, uh, like the three layers now merge into one single uh, 3D object, uh, can, you, can you do, like, a smart object from uh, a 3D layer? I can... I can embed this in fact I've done this I have I can embed the smart uh, the 3d layer inside a smart object yes okay. but then to edit the 3d you'd have yeah. to go back go into in that and, yeah. and edit that so, so yeah if you want to keep the 3d capabilities and yet treat it like a regular 2d layer in your compositing yes you can do that you so because the 3d layer it's in Photoshop the 3d layer you can apply a layer mask to a 3d layer you can apply layer styles to a 3d layer so there's a lot of really cool things you can do um, with that um, <laughs> Where was I? Oh, um, so to add that kind of chrome effect, and now I'm going to show you the file I'm going to use here, and it's a very abstract um, chrome effect. That's all it is, just a really f um, oh. wavy lines and stuff like that. So, so this is like for our IBL? Or is it no, the, um, well, I'm gonna, I want to get that chrome effect on that outer ring. Oh, okay. So to do that, I want to localize it to just that object. Okay. So to do that, you have the uh, front bevel selected here. Now in the properties panel, where, where you've got the shine and reflection and such like that, further down you're going to see you've got an environment. Uh, property here. So let's take that and go and choose load texture and I'm going to go and locate. And Angelo is asking can you import a global IBL image? Uh, yeah, IBL can be any image, any photo yeah. or like that. So so now I've imported oh. that chrome element. Now you can see um, that it's applied it and if I go and grab current view and rotate it around you can see that now it's oh my God. the light is dancing <laughs> around it. Now obviously I want to smooth it out a little bit. Um, I don't want it to be that, the lines to be like, that yeah, the sharp. Yeah. So we're going to make some adjustments there. But, um, but I also want to change the color. So let's go back into that object. How are we on time? Oh, we're doing good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 15, no, that's plenty. Alright, yeah. so I'm going to go back into that environment and choose edit texture to open that thing back up. So we need to end, you know, at uh, 55. Okay. We have a little bit less. Okay. That's still fine. Oh, no. You cut me short. No. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. No, actually, I'm going to um, blur sorry. this effect. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, I'm going to do it as a motion blur. Let's go to blur, motion blur. And you can really get, you know, because it's an abstract element, you can really just get you know, any angle you want. So I got it at 20, 100, 40, that. Those, are, those settings are fine. Um, but I'm also going to change the color. I'm going to make a new layer and give it that same kind of gold color we've been using. Fill that layer in. Now, once you do that, of course, you can see the wireframe that represents that ring of, of what we're seeing here. But I'm going to change the blend mode of this color filled layer to overlay. Ooh. And that's going to give us this kind of gold look. Now, if I save at this point, you're going to see this oh, really, yeah. this kind of thing happen. <laughs> so, um, I'm actually going to, I can see now that's a little bit too much blur. So let's. Uh, just make that a little bit less. There we go. So once again, we'll color fill layer, change it to overlay, close it, save the changes, and there we got really cool outer ring. Oh my god. Looking really cool. So it's got the cool bevel. See how it's got the shape and everything like that? So now i got to reposition that. Ooh. I didn't realize that thing was sitting that far back, so. Oh, the ring? Yeah. Well, that inner shape. So let's mm -hmm. just pull that forward a little bit more. 
And then we'll adjust position of the bolt. There we go. Ah. Okay. Very nice. Okay. So now, um, on the bolt itself, I'm going to select that. We're not going to do um, the uh, the environment thing we just did, but I am going to go and select that bevel property. I've got I've got the shine reflection apply. So this one, we're actually going to go ahead and use the global IBL for. So we're actually going to replace the one that's already there. So select environment up here. Go to the IBL setting, and let's just go ahead and choose new texture. And let's make it 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. IBLs don't need to be large at all. In fact, this is all, it's a, this in itself is probably a little big, but it's it's fine. Uh, Simon, he wants you to, to render it, yeah, like at the end. Yeah, actually, I'll show time. you. I'm not going to have time to add, because I was really hoping to add the finishing effects I did, but I'll show you the my my, def my definite final version that I did originally, and you can really see the, the detail in that and such like that. Nice. So, um, I'll, and I'm inside the uh, the IBL I just created, solid black background. I'm just going to create an oval selection, and then I'm just going to add a little gradient inside of that selection. And that's pretty much... Actually, you know what? I'm going to do two of them. I'm going to do one up here in the corner. So a small gradient there, and then a small one right here. Lower opacity. There we go. Oh, not quite that low. Like that. We'll save that. So now if I take this IBL and rotate it around, you can see how the... Oh. Oh, yeah, you see the two. See a little uh, specular yeah. showing up on the lightning bolt element there. But also on the inside circle. Now, if I go yep. and select that shape, and this goes back to what I was talking about, not using a solid white fill, but rather a very light gray, so it'll allow us to see those specular elements a little bit better. But we also got to adjust... Um, the default light. Remember that I, uh, I mentioned the lights earlier? Uh, it's got an infinite light uh, applied by default. Let's switch that to a point light. Oh. And you don't like infinite light. It, I mean, yeah, I've, I've used it. Um, it. I just get more dramatic effects <laughs> using point and spotlights. You just get really, really cool uh, result there. Now, when you when you change the light or, uh, or add a new light and you don't necessarily see it or the lighting's not right, here's a little um, button here. It's called Move to View. Mm -hmm. Click that, and it will reposition the light right in front of your object. So now you can use the 3D tools to, to just kind of push it closer. And then we'll just manipulate the... This effect here. And then I'm going to go in and give it a much wider angle camera. And we're essentially mm -hmm. changing the virtual lens at which we're looking at this object. So does, it, does it create a uh, distortion? Yeah, you can like, so the lower the number, of course, so you know, photography, the lower the number, the wider okay. angle lens. So if I, right now the default is 67 millimeters. So if I drop this to maybe say 20, you'll see that it drops back in space. It didn't shrink the object. It just, when it, by adjusting the lens, it appears yeah. to be further back based on the camera angle. So now we're going to take our slide tool here. And again, I've got current view selected, which is the camera. And just click and drag down, and that's going to basically move the camera closer to the object. But yes, ultimately you get these more dramatic angles like oh, this. Yeah. So as you reposition the, uh, the logo like that. So now it's just a matter of just doing a little bit of... Um, tweaking of the settings and then getting the position right and that's uh, pretty much it now let me go mm -hmm. ahead and get the uh, original and we have six minutes so this is whoa the final of my original version so you can see when it's rendered it creates reflections on the inside circle element here okay and then I you added some particles so I added these particle effects and this lightning effect is actually you know what I'll show you. Well, I do have time to show. I got yeah, five minutes. Okay. Yeah, five minutes. Got five minutes. Why not? Okay. <laughs> so I'll open up the original layered file and we'll just reapply these effects here. So let's have a look here. But again, this is a, another one of those things where I'm like, I so love Photoshop because you, once you have your 3D element created and then you raster it or, or you render it, then you've got the, all the best of Photoshop to finish your compositing yeah. all, all in one place here. So that's what I did here. So there's the element um, in the scene, and it's got some background color elements going on here. So all I did was I have a brush that I created. Uh, it's, a, it's a lightning brush. There there, oh, there it is. Oh. Uh, okay, so we have a... I see Valeskin, can you show the step to render the 3D? 
So it's just a command in the menu, right? Yeah, oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> let me just make sure I've got my right brush here. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. All right, um, so yeah, back in the object here. When you're ready to render, you just simply go to the 3D menu and go here and just choose Render 3D Layer. And it's going to go ahead and start uh, start plugging away. And so you now you can see how those details uh, start to emerge. Wow. Reflections, shadows, and such like that. Of course, depending on the processing power of your machine, is going to determine how long it takes to render. This particular one on this machine, it took maybe less than an hour to render fully. Not even that. It was probably more like 30 minutes. Still. Um, I mean, that's a but that was pretty good. So, uh, And, of course, as the render progresses, if you see something you like, oh, I, w I wanted to fix this or anything like that, just hit escape. Cancels the render, you can make your change, and you can just restart the render when you're ready to go. So that's really, really quickly and easily. And, ano and another thing I do, and this is actually in, right. in the tutorial that I'm going to make available to you, when I'm done re uh, rendering a 3D object, I will make a duplicate of the layer and then just right click on it, choose Rasterize 3D. Because right. I want to keep my editable 3D layer, but I also want to be able to bring it, um, the, the, the rasterized version, into my composite because I may want to do some other manipulations to it that you can't do when it's in 3D mode. Mm. So, but make a duplicate first. Uh, if you rasterize your original 3D object and something goes wrong, you're going to have to go back to square one again, or go back to the last time you saved at least. So just be, just keep that in mind. All right. So I've got a, a brush here that I defined. It's just a lightning element that I just defined as a brush, and I'm going to go over here into my brush options and let's just give this a lot of chaotic behavior so size jitter angle jitter so you see all these cool things going on uh, flip X flip Y just add as much chaos and randomness to it as you can and space it out a little bit so we're getting there we go so what I'm gonna do is just paint in a cluster of lightning right here in the middle so like that mm hmm and I want to add a layer style to it. And I'm just going to go ahead and just copy the layer style I've already got applied here, which is just this yellow glow. And in fact, I'll show you. It's just just an outer glow. Okay. Screen, 78%, you know, deep yellow color. Got the same yellow color I've been using throughout the project. Um, 18 on the side and like that. So just a very simple glow. But now what I want to do is because I really wanted to, this is a cool trick I, I did a, a long time ago. I want the logo, the element, to have this kind of sense of movement, like it's, it's the flash. You, know? you want to have that kind of sense of speed. So I'm um, going to do two things here. I'm going to actually make a duplicate of the layer and turn off a duplicate. And then we're going to go to warp here. So I'm oh, just going to okay. go and right click on it and choose warp. And we're going to stretch these elements okay, with the mesh. Okay. and just kind of pull and just but by stretching it. I like to do this versus warping because when you stretch pixels, it actually has this in, uh, interesting side effect of having a sense of motion, a motion blur effect. And you can actually um, set the direction. Unlike a blur, now of course you have path blur now, which allows you yeah. to do it in, in multiple directions. But I just like to be able to manipulate the grid and give it that sense of movement like that. So that's all I'm going to do there. Now that ex that element that's protruding out of the front here, let's just take a mask, a layer mask, and just kind of fade that away there. Okay. But then now I'm going to turn on the other duplicate one, and I'm going to reposition that layer. Oh, is it here? Put that above the logo element. So now it's in front of it right, right here. Oh, okay. But then I'm going to take that, and we're going to do the same warp, but a little bit differently. We're going to grab it inside of the grid here and pull this over this way. <laughs> and this is going to give us a little bit of a contour around that. And if you hold down the command key, it'll actually allow you to reposition it. And we just want to oh, nice. manipulate this so it kind of looks like it's breaking this energy barrier. <laughs> and So nice. So that looks really cool. So now I press enter, and there's that. Now, obviously, there's too much going on in front of the logo element. So if I throw a layer mask on that. And Nate is asking, like, is this uh, video tutorial on your website too? Yeah, it's going to be. I'm gonna t you're going to be able to get it for free in just wow. a minute. I'm going to tell you how to get it. And if I'm just mask out the, the main area of the logo here and just do a little bit of last minute manipulation. So I need to prepare the link. And that is pretty much how you achieve the flash. How so Almost completely from scratch in, uh, in Photoshop. So I presented you three scenarios um, to be able to integrate 3D into your workflow. You've got Fuse, you've got Pixel Squid objects, and of course you've got Photoshop itself. And, and not forgetting Felix, uh, like I showed you yesterday. So, All right. Um, awesome. So you wanted to share a code. 
Uh, yes, I do. Let me pull up. Uh, you know what? I'll just, while I'm here, I'll just pull up my site. Yeah. So this is my site right here. It's Master Effects Training. Now, you just go MasterEffectsTraining.com. Uh, I'm going to actually make it live in just a minute. You'll see the link. Now, you have to have the code to be able to access. And the code is, are you ready? Drum roll. Adobe Live. All caps. All, Adobe Live Corey. That's it. One all, word. all one word. Corey. Adobe, Adobe Live, Live Corey. Corey. Now, on this very page, you'll see that element show up. When I get off camera here in just a minute, I'm going to go ahead and launch it and use that a code, Adobe Live Corey. Is that it? Yeah, that's right. right. And uh, nice you, you'll be able to access guys. all three tutorials I did today for free. So yep. hope you check it out. We will be back in five minutes on adobelive.com with uh, Victoria Seymour. And I'll see you tomorrow, same time. Absolutely. I'm back here again. Yeah. I'm having fun. Thanks, I'm Barry. enjoying it. Bye, everyone. All right. Bye-bye.